You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody, I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Terry Border. Hi, Terry, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me, Sammy. Gosh, it's my pleasure. You know, I love talking to Indiana authors and illustrators, and you're both. So this is so super exciting. <laughs> it's good to talk to you. I'm excited about people who are excited about books. And birds, too, I hope. You're and excited birds, about birds. And birds, birds right. especially, yes. Good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana. Let's see, how old am I? 54 years old. I have lived in Indiana about 53 of those, or 50 of those years. My whole family is from Indiana to my great-grandparents. I've always lived here, and I probably always will. So you're a Hoosier. I am. Yes, I am. My wife from Cincinnati, and we, we got married. She became an honorary Hoosier, too, and our daughter's a Hoosier, and uh, it's just my state. I love it. Oh, that's so great. I love that, too. So, Terry, can you tell us a little bit about your work? I think your work is so unique and fun because you do a lot with, um, w would you call it photography? Yes, I used to be a photographer for a job for many years, and finally I, I just wanted to make some art of my own. So I started making things uh, out of wire and of ordinary objects around the house. I, I like to use my imagination is what I like. That's my favorite thing of all. It doesn't cost anything to use your imagination, is, which is a great thing. I get ordinary things from around the house or the kitchen, or maybe a cheese doodle or a peanut, and I try to think if that peanut was alive, if it had arms and legs and walked around, what kind of life would it have? Would he brush his teeth? Would he uh, be afraid people were gonna eat him? Would he have a friend that was a cheese puff? or a cracker, or a, an apple, and I kind of make stories about that. Sometimes my stories are one picture that I try to make funny and make people laugh, and sometimes they're children's books. Oh, it's so fun, and you also, um, you also do puzzles, is that right? I've done puzzles. They made them many years ago, and I'm not sure if they're still making them. Huh. I had a few of them around the house one time, oh, two times. People have bought puzzles that are made of my pictures, and they email me because their puzzle is missing one piece. Oh. They to me about the missing piece. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that. Am I supposed to find the missing piece that they're missing and send it to them in a letter? Am I supposed to give them their money back, even though I don't own the factory that makes the puzzles? But it's very interesting. It seems like, what if you found a little piece of puzzle and you stuck wires to it, and then you could make a story about it? I have done that. I have done that two or three different times. Oh, that's because, so fun. Yes, because, you know, when you think of little puzzle pieces with arms and legs, it's kind of like people. We're all looking for our place in the world. We're all looking for the people that we connect with. So that's what I like to do. I'm, I kind of see the connection. I see how are we like a puzzle piece and how a puzzle piece is like us. What kind of story is there to tell about that? Oh, I love that. So Terry, tell us, where are you right now in your creative journey, you know, all puzzles aside, and where do you hope to be someday? I have done, I believe, seven full-size picture books for kids, which I love to do, and I hope I do some more of those. Yeah, we have one I, right here. This is Milk yeah, Goes to milk school. school. Yes, that's about a little milk carton's first day at school. I remember when I was in kindergarten, I was so very nervous about my first day of school. And I remember my mom dropped me off there and I was very nervous, but it ended up being a great day. And I love kindergarten, but I remember being nervous. So that's why I made that book. As far as where I'm gonna go now, I've done a lot of things. I've made books for adults, funny books. I've made books for kids. Right now I'm messing with some cartoons. I've, before I was in photography, I was trying to be a cartoonist. And I didn't, I, I stuck with that for a couple of years, but then I, I kind of let that go and I made, had some success in photography. And now I'm kind of, you know, maybe I'll try that again. So I'm doing, working on that right now. I also bought a computer that can help me make some stop motion animation. If you know Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on TV every year, that's stop motion. That's have little puppets and they move. Oh, Terry, what's a puppet? 
you wouldn't know what a puppet was because, of course, you're not a puppet. No, but other, of course not. No, you're a real toucan. We all know that. Little puppets are stuffed animals or maybe little models of people that you kind of move around and you uh, add your voice to there and you kind of pretend like they're alive and you make a little a little uh, show with them. Oh, okay. Characters. It sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. Okay. <laughs> They're uh, really fun. That's great. Well, that is really exciting. I can't wait to watch if you get some stop motion. I would just love to watch that. That would be really great. Would that be, would that be things for children or for grown-ups? I don't know. Probably both because I like to do both. I like to make things for kids because I love visiting schools and talking to kids. and I, I like that a lot. But I also am a grown-up myself, so I like to do things that make me and my friends laugh too. So I'll probably do both. That's great. Now you mentioned going to school visits, but you're not really doing that right now, are you? No, I no. wish I could. I know. I, it's it's yeah. because of the pandemic. So how are you coping right now with the health crisis? And do you have any advice for other people? I am a different individual, as we all are. But with me, I like people, but I also like to imagine things in my head all the time. So I don't mind staying in my house and thinking up stories in my head and drawing pictures. I'm not that bad. Now, my brother, he is a different kind of person. A lot of people, they need to see people all the time and to make them feel good. And, uh, but I talk to him on the phone all the time. And I know those people are having a rough time because they're not able to see uh, enough people. But I like to create things, and so, I mean, I'm very lucky that I get to, I, I don't mind working by myself, so I'm yeah. okay. I hear that from a lot of my authors and illustrators. They're all kind of like, well, I'm at home, and I'm doing my, <laughs> doing my work, <laughs> you know? Yeah. As far as my day-to-day -day life, it's the same as it's always been. Yeah, but it still is hard for others, and we don't want to lose sight of that. It uh, is. Terry, this has been so fun. Do you have something there that you can share with us? Yes. Well, I have a couple different things. Uh, after Milk Goes to School, I did a, made a story about a little peanut and his mom and dad, and they visited their grandma for the holidays. It's called Merry Christmas Peanut. Aww. And I still have the grandma peanut, <gasps> if you can see her. And she, is, she has a hockey stick and I skates on because at the end of the book, she's playing hockey. But that's what my characters look like. And then I take pictures of those characters that I make, and uh, that's the pictures in my storybooks. Oh, that's so great. You know, it's so funny how she has a little personality. You know, she's just a little peanut, but she's got a personality. I love that. Well, it's funny because peanuts kind of look like people a little bit. You know, they have bodies and because they're kind of – and then they have kind of a head shape on top. So it's pretty easy, I think, to make them look kind of cute. Kind of yeah. like a And I also have a couple of books. It's called Scary Snacks. And it's about three snacks. Can you see what snacks those are? We've got, is it a cheese curl, a cheese yeah. curl and like a twisty pretzel? And what's the third thing? Yeah. Is it a meatball? It's a sprinkly cookie. Oh, a sprinkly cookie. Cookies covered with sprinkles. Got it. One day, when all their friends are cleaning up the cabinet, the food cabinet where they live, they decide that they don't want to do that. That sounds kind of boring. So they go off. And here's, here's one of my favorite pictures in the book. Do you see that character right there? I do. Yes. You know what that is? That's a Girl Scout cookie. I see it. <laughs> I love Girl Scout cookies, so I thought, what if we could put those in the book? So the Girl Scout cookies are helping clean up the cabinet. And everybody's doing their part, but then the three, the three snacks, pretzel, cheese puff, cheese doodle, and the cookie, they go off. And I wanted to show you, they go to another cabinet, center of the sink, and it's spooky. <gasps> and... They see a doorway that it's open. Oh gosh. They go, they knock on the door and it opens and creaks open. And they think, hmm, I wonder if we should go in here and explore. And they do. <gasps> and you'll have to see what happens. Oh gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait. 
It's, you know, it's a little, it, it's, it's not, it's not scary, but it's, I think it's, uh, uh, it's something that will make you want to read it more. It's, it makes you a little nervous because you don't know what's going on. And I you like know, that thing. Yeah. Sometimes I think it's fun to be scared. Oh, I do too. You know? Yes. Oh, Terry. Well, this has been so, so delightful. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us. And out there to everybody, I just wanted to say that this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan, encouraging you to read local. So long, everybody. Thank you, Sammy. <laughs>